going to these games and seeing the rainbow flag on a professional team that represents Minnesota is significant. The flags are flying there, transgender flag flying there along with the team's flag. You know, you had people asking, is the rainbow always on the back of their jerseys and stuff? I know that the gay friends I have in the city, they notice some of the initiatives that we have on the screen before games. They notice the inclusion. They notice some of the words of acceptance from the players before the game. That doesn't go unnoticed for people that might not feel that type of acceptance at other sporting events. I think it's really important for the visibility to get people to not just say, everyone is welcome here, but to actually show them there and say that you're not just welcome, we want you to lead us. While Pride matches take place at MLS matches all across the U.S. and Canada during the LGBTQ plus Pride Month, the one here in Minnesota has taken on a special meaning. On Friday, June 29th, Minnesota United midfielder Colin Martin posted a simple message on social media announcing something he hopes will one day require no such announcement. He's gay. The impact was immediate. The tweet went viral, getting 100,000 likes in a matter of days and accomplishing what the LGBTQ plus community fights for every day, visibility. Last year, around this time, I had a reporter come to training and she asked me, hey, like, I, I know you did playing for Pride the past year. What makes you want to support the LGBTQ community? And I couldn't tell her that, like, why I was actually proud to, to, to be a part of this. And the fact that I was gay means the world to me that this is even happening. But the last step was really, like, I didn't want to not come out while I was playing. I would have felt shameful if I would have waited and come out when I was 30 years old and been like, oh, by the way, I was gay, of course, when I was playing. Like, that wouldn't have been cool to me. Our Pride game was coming up and I thought it'd be a great way to celebrate with the fans. Recently I saw a piece by LZ Granderson and he was saying like, why do we even have Pride nights if no athletes are gonna come out anyways? I think he kind of missed the point of the broader sense of the community and what the night means for not just the athletes and the teams, but the community at large. Who cares if there's not a gay person on the field, but it's for people to come and celebrate themselves and the community in a place where they can feel like themselves. The rainbow flags and signs we see today at Pride matches are a reflection of the social awakening of the time in which professional soccer in Minnesota began, where in 1978, two years after the founding of the NASL's Minnesota Kicks, artist Gilbert Baker, an openly gay man and drag queen, designed the first rainbow flag. Over the decades, the flag has evolved alongside our ideas of how we think of sex and gender in society more broadly represented in different ways by the supporters groups, but coming together in the Wonderwall. We have the dark clouds of the oldest supporters group, and then True North Elite, the Red Loons, which is a kind of progressive group that largely raised money for workers, refugees, immigrants, and LGBTQ issues. The last group is Dark Politerati, led by women and LGBTQ members and supporters as a way to really put forward a different face. At the end of the game, I was using some text messages from some of my friends that were there, and I know that their kids saw me on the big screen. To be able to see folks being out and proud and living normal, productive lives is of significance. What did it feel like for you, actually, to go out there and to be recognized by the club? It's always nice to be recognized, um, especially for the work that you're doing, because you know the work that I'm doing in regards to community activism, I'm doing it for recognition, I'm doing it to be able to help the people that I'm trying to help. I deal with sexual harassment, discrimination, and wrongful termination issues in the workplace. And so there's an overlay in regards to LGBT inclusion. But then, you know, I'm also caring for those that live in my community too. So providing the protections that I didn't necessarily have when I was a kid. Being African-American, my history wasn't really taught in school. 
right? You hear about Martin Luther King, you hear about Rosa Parks, you hear a little bit about slavery, but that was it, right? So I was able to learn most of you know, my history in regards to my background and ancestry through my parents and family, right? So you have a black family, so you learn about black history at home. But then you have LGBT kids, and most of them aren't coming from LGBT families or queer families. Where are they gonna learn this type of history? In the early morning hours of June 28, 1969, NYPD's public moral squad loaded into unmarked police vehicles en route to the now historic gay bar here on Christopher Street in Greenwich Village, the Stonewall Inn. The police raiding of Stonewall was not unusual, as this harassment and criminalization of queer people was routine for the time. What was unusual, though, was on this night, the patrons not only didn't leave, but this time fought back. The resistance grew night by night with protests and violent clashes spilling into the streets, sparking a wave of political activism and the modern LGBTQ rights movement in the U.S. and around the world. Some of the ordinances indicated that you had to wear three articles of clothing that corresponded with the gender that was on your ID. And so that's why a lot of the police would ask for IDs when they went in. And if you were in drag and you had three articles of clothing that were male, you could get arrested. You know, if you were engaged in public displays of affection with somebody of the same sex, you could get arrested. If you were dancing with somebody of the same sex, you could get arrested. And it wasn't just getting arrested, it was also some places would also print your name and your photo in the newspaper, which could mean that you would end up losing your job and you'd be outed to your family. People just said enough was enough. If we look at our forefathers and our four sisters that were fighting for LGBT rights at the Stonewall Riots days, they were trans, non-binary people of color. Some folks try to tamp it down and say it was a Stonewall uprising. No, it was a riot. It was a riot where people were tired of having their rights violated. Once the townhouse, now Blackheart is the oldest gay bar in St. Paul. With the opening of the new Allianz Field just a couple blocks away, it's now become a queer soccer pub, hosting everything from pregame festivities, marches to the match, and events for supporters groups, while still maintaining the legacy of drag shows at night. This bar became a gay bar in the 1960s, and it's been a place that people come to as a safe space. The idea of drag and a gay bar and soccer, to me, it's not incongruous. Already, the soccer and queer communities overlap. For me, it was about never replacing something but adding to it. And how can we add soccer to it and still make people feel like it's their home? As joyous and expressive and creative as drag is, that's what I also see in the soccer community. We spend 90 minutes singing and cheering at grown men out on the pitch, and then you come back and it's the same. You're, you're not there to watch a drag show. You're there to be a part of it. And you're never a passive participant of either. No performer wants to perform to people who just want to watch them. They want to perform to people who they're, they're making feel something. Well, I think about it in some ways, you know, both places, whether the bar or the stadium, there are places for self-expression, yeah. pageantry, sometimes over the top, yeah. emotion, drama, all of those things yeah. seem to fit together maybe more than people would think. It's great watching worlds kind of collide. You know, the history of Stonewall is this riot, the real kind of modern pride era was launched by trans people of color. And we have a lot of trans people of color who perform here. For straight cis men or, or women to come to their first drag show and be like, what is this world? And the same is, it's been great introducing a lot of our patrons to soccer, who they look around and they think, what are all these people singing about? It's a different type of church. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and a brace for Ike Apara. I'm sure I've played with gay players before, but none that were openly gay. Uh, how does it play out in the locker room, and is it different than maybe what you expected? No, it's exactly what I expected. We respect Colin as a person, first and foremost. Colin took a huge step to do that, and I'm sure he was wondering if his career was going to you know, derail just because of the fact that he came out. 
It's also frustrating that, you know, we have to talk about moments like this as it's becoming normalized. I wish it was always that way from the front, but, you know, people like Colin are chin setters and, and trailblazers for what we wanted to become as a society as a whole. I've really cherished having, like, intimate conversations with my teammates about being gay because a lot of these guys haven't had a gay friend. There's probably a gay person in their life, whether it's an uncle, cousin, but they haven't had a person that they've been able to ask hard questions to and been able to like, to kind of feel vulnerable around. Here's Robbie Keane now. Oh, it's lovely. Robbie Rogers! Oh, yes! It's a special night for him! I was able to talk to Robbie a little bit when I came out. It's so important just to have anyone to look up to. Those people give you the courage to then share with other people. I, I don't know, I, I look up to the fact that Robbie is in a loving marriage and has a kid. I never got to see how two gay men interact in terms of their family, in terms of how they raise a kid. Is that something you would like to have one day? I'd like to have a family, yeah, for sure, for sure. We'll see how that looks or when that happens or, but uh, gotta find a partner first. Do you have any celebrity crushes? Who would be your number one celeb crush? Uh, I don't know. Timothy Chalamet, he's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Now you're talking our language. And I'm did sure. you notice a change after you came out publicly? Was that a different scene for you walking around Minnesota? Yeah, a couple little more DMs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th those, are, those are fun. Keep those DMs open, you know, you'll be all right. Keep those DMs <laughs> open. In 2017, Colin and Ike's fellow Wake Forest grad and MLS alum, Austin Deleuze, started playing for Pride. Now, over 20 MLS players participate in the program by pledging money per assist, goal, or match play during the month of June, with the proceeds going to the Athlete Ally for LGBTQ inclusion in sports. It felt right to me. The person I am, I always preach you know, equity. And so, I mean, you've got guys from, I don't know how many countries are on our team, even 19, 20, and then we've got, you know, obviously, Colin, who's in the locker room. No story is the same, from you know, Michael Boxer in New Zealand to myself from North Carolina and Darwin and Columbia. You see the differences, you see the beauties, and that helps you grow as a person, as a player, as a teammate. You know, it's been regular, every day, same locker room, you know, some banter, uh, you know, here and there, it's, it's all the same. All my teammates are allies. I think they are. And it's cool to see the support of my colleagues that are straight. I think this is important to them, and important just in sharing this month with the people that are in the community at their clubs. For me, in my experience, you know, as a black man in America and that plays soccer, you know, that has its own challenges. If I get pulled over, you know, by a cop, I don't say I'm Michael Parr, a soccer player, like, I'm good and safe. No, that's out the window. I go to the, the realm of, oh man, all right, here it goes. Like, you're not sheltered because you play sports. I'll truly never understand what it's like to be Colin, I won't, and, and he won't understand what it's like to be me. Sitting here picking and choosing which one's more important, no, like they're all important. And so hearing you know Colin come out was more of, I'm happy that this is a way to help anyone that maybe struggles with their sexuality in sports and to know that it's okay, that even though I'm not you know, homosexual, I encourage you to come play. Like, I want you to know that it's a safe space. Out players make a difference. You know, millions of people are watching them on TV every week. I mean, you think about our history with integration and stuff. Sports was one of the forefronts in regards to that. I had a kid that was like 12 years old reach out and say that he was gonna come out to his parents at the game after seeing my message in the morning. So like, that was wild. A couple weeks ago, a player in Australia in the second division was reaching out to me on Instagram. We were talking and he actually came out two weeks ago, had an enormous reaction. Honestly, those stories haven't stopped. That goes back to the pressure that I feel now more than ever because I feel like there's more eyes on me and I feel like I represent a lot more people than just myself, which is a wild feeling. All right. Awesome. Get a picture? It's okay? It looks awesome. Cool. Right. Awesome. Right. Well, thanks so much. Uh, oh, yeah, I just am so yeah. proud of what you're Hopefully. able to do. Yeah. This is at your age, I never would have had the guts to do yeah. At my age, if I was your, me, me, yeah, it never have happened. What about his story spoke to you so much that you would travel from New Jersey to Minneapolis for We've the Pride match? We've got five professional men's sports. In all those five, he is the only athlete who's come out as gay. That, to me, speaks volumes, and I think someone who does that 
deserve to be supported. And I know all too well, my age, when I was his age way back, people who were gay, you did not come out for fear of God knows what would happen to you. And, and, and then sports, I think, especially male sports, has been the dominance of anti-gay. And for someone to come through, as Colin is, before him there was, I think, Robbie Rogers, who was out. Uh, I think it can do a lot for the sport and a lot for people. Cool. Well said. Someday I'm gonna be What is a Pride Parade? It's literally a celebration, right? So it's a celebration of a lot of different types of people and the authenticity of the lives they live. And I think it's also a safe place for people to express themselves. And how many places are you able to express yourself in public the way you want it? Sometimes it's folks one time of the year that they can just celebrate and be gay and not have to worry about what others are going to be thinking or doing or saying, not have to worry about acts of violence against them. Just be happy and be free. A lot of these people that were fighting at Stonewall, still, we need to fight for them even more. Our rights today are still being compromised, and I think it's our job, honestly, to continue to fight for people, and especially trans people, and people that are less fortunate to have the rights that we have. What does the rainbow mean to you? It represents diversity to me. I think it represents the fact that even though we all may be different and may have different backgrounds, we're all one and part of nature and, and we came how we came and we're here while we're here and that we can all coexist. You know, rainbows, natural occurrence in nature, comes after the storm. It brings hope and it always makes me smile. The symbol of a rainbow flag Taking a naturally occurring phenomenon to represent so many who have been systematically told that who they are and how they love is unnatural, in and of itself makes pride, and the party that comes with it, a statement of resistance. Amidst the colorful celebration of progress, though, Stonewall 50 reminds us of both the risk of erasure and the power of recognition to inform our point of view, and a call to reflect and reflect light to center those who have historically taken the first steps forward but are far too often still left behind. Whether in our stadiums, locker rooms, soccer or queer bars, and sometimes both, the rainbow flag may best represent the possibilities in sport and society still unseen. Fleeting, yes, but continuing the legacy with pride.